What's up guys? I'm here with my friend Tom. It's Tom Krieber. It's TK Performance. Um, I'm dropping off a third member for him to do a uh, limited slip and, and just a uh, new ring and pinion in it. So this is Tom. How, How you doing, doing Tom? So I wanted to just, you know, show everybody what you got going here. I mean, well, what I got going is this is my dirty room. <laughs> okay. And uh, you're catching me doing balance jobs in here. So this is a dirty room too. But uh, Right now I'm doing a balance job for Universal. Okay. And this is my head bench, my balancer, and then here's my engine assembly room. What would you say your specialty is, Tom? Uh, carburetors. Carburetors is your thing, really? Yeah, I, I okay. like carburetors. This is my carburetor bench there. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. Tom, how long have you been doing this? Over 50 years. Tom's been doing this for... 50 years that's since i was 18. wow that's incredible my father owned a speed shop uh, yeah yeah the whole time i was young yeah cool cool so this is primarily you know i mean you're you're one man band i'm a one man band but you've been uh you know you've been doing this for a long time and have since a, i was 18 i'm 77. jeez and you got a long long waiting list of stuff to do yes for I people do. Yeah. You know, what's your what's your favorite thing, I would say? What's your favorite thing to do? My favorite thing is carburetors, but I mean, I like building racing engines. Uh, they're they're very time consuming. Cool. Uh, I build a lot of NHRA motors. Yeah. Um but yeah, we do everything here, balancing. Yep. Uh rear ends, carburetors, distributors. Um I do balancing for other shops. Yep. Which is what I'm in the middle of doing now. Yep. Yeah, Tom <clears throat> Tom did the the rotating assembly on the engine for that Al Clark built for the race of gentlemen car. So it's uh see so you got a lot of guns around. That's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has to have those now. I agree. I agree. So very cool, Tom. I just wanted to you know, every time I come in here I'm always like, Wow, it's so awesome. You got all this cool stuff in here. So explain I mean explain when you do it when you balance a crank what you know well, what this machine does. What this machine, is, believe it or not, it's a very fancy tire balancer. <laughs> okay. If you want to look at it that way. Yep. Uh, this is an external setup. As you can see, I just drilled on the on the balancer here. Uh, what you do, this machine will will tell you when it's perfectly balanced. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to spin it with that. Yep. And uh, so this is just like a rubber piece of rubber yep, or something. Runs, yeah. So you don't damage the crank. So you just little, you just wipe that off after you're done. Yep. Um, so it just sits on some, some yeah, bearings. Yeah, bearings. This is known as a soft balancer. Yep. Uh, I can't drill on this. There are hard balancers that you can drill on, but supposedly this is the, this is the more accurate balancer. Cool. Awesome. But, you know, it would be a lot handier to be able to drill on it, but I have to lift the cranks on and off, and that's why I got this out, this rig out. Okay. And then this is basically just so what you're doing is just taking material. Uh, well, yeah, because this is an externally balanced deal, and i got to take some weight out of, out of the this and the crank i just got done drilling the crank right now how crucial is balancing an engine you know what i mean i, I you can i mean anybody can buy some parts and put a motor together well but... it, it is very like this crank here uh universal bought before i started balancing it was actually hop right off the hop right off the balancer it was so far out no kidding when you buy a rotating assembly these this is a stroker assembly yep and uh they're so, nowhere near so this is for what this is for a 496 Chevy. Okay. And this is just so somebody bought a new crank. Yep. And 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 Universal basically said, all right, we got to balance this Right, thing. Universal, I do their balance work. Okay. Well, yeah. awesome. If you need anything balanced. I'm here. Hit up Tom. It's <laughs> TK Performance. I'll, uh, I'll put his uh, contact information in the link below. Have a good one, guys. Thanks, Jerry. So this is Tom's neighborhood. It's a very unassuming neighborhood. And then this is Tom's house. And you would not believe, you know, this is, he builds engines here. It's amazing. I think everybody uh, has this kind of dream of having this awesome home garage. And Tom certainly uh, certainly has it for what he does. So it's, it's really cool. I mean, I've been friends with Tom for a long, long time. And, uh, you know, anytime I have a question, I hit up Tom. So Tom and Al Clark are good friends. And, um, you know, that's how I actually know Tom is through Al, because Tom has always balanced all of Al's rotating assemblies for all the early Ford stuff that Al does. So anyways, um, I don't know. I'm just heading to the shop now. I have to, I had to drop that, uh, 
that gear set or that third member off. It's for a Ford eight inch. Um, I have to, had to drop that off at Tom and then I'm heading to uh, the powder coater right now to pick up a, uh, a rear end that I had them just media blast for now. Um, it was kind of a scuzzy rear. So I had them media blast it and now I'm gonna get it back and now I'm gonna be able to do all the stuff that we need to do to it as far as like welding to the <clears throat> to the rear end housing. So we have to install um, a ladder bar setup with just some coilovers. Um, it's a pretty straightforward setup, but figured I might as well, it's going to get powder coated anyway. So I figured why not have them media blast it uh, and that way I'm working with nice, clean, fresh, media blasted metal. Um, you know, and then obviously I'm gonna bring it back to them and have them powder coat it. So anyways, that's what I'm doing right now. I am back at the powder coaters. Um, this is the rear end housing. This is brand new. <clears throat> it's brand new old stock. Um, it's never been in a car. It's uh, it's a little rusty crusty. So it's just been, but, it, and, and actually from what I'm told, it's not sat outside. Uh, it's just been sitting in a, in a, um, not in climate controlled warehouse. So that's why it's kind of rusty and pitted. However, it's never been in a car. Um, the gear set, like the third member, the ring and pinion and everything and the axles are brand new. Everything was totally brand new on it. Um, but I'm just gonna have this stripped. This is actually, wait a minute. I just said in the video that uh, have a rear, I'm bringing this rear end to be media blasted so we could weld stuff to it. This is a different rear end. That rear end is already inside and it's probably already media blasted. I'm going to pick that up now. This rear end is just here for, this is the, for the 1950 Chevy truck. Um, it was uh, in order to do the disc brakes on the rear and we want to do a little bit narrower of a rear end to get, um, to be able to run a lower offset rear wheel so, to, so the wheel will have like some dish to it. So <clears throat> we got this rear, um, which is a tad narrower than the rear that was in the truck. But either way, this is brand new rear. It's just gonna be, it's, I'm bringing it here to be, to be powder coated. Um, so all the, all the guts and everything are out of it. I made a, uh, you know, just like a little plate here that, uh, you know, more or less when they blast it, you know, there's going to be sand that's gonna get inside of it, but it's more just to protect the bearing races. Um, you know, so this is just for media blasting. <clears throat> and then they'll take the tape off, they'll take this off, and then they'll use the powder, the, the, the special tape for, for powder coating um, that can withstand the heat of the, of the, the bake booth. Um, then we'll tape everything off. But this is literally just for media blasting. The cover is only on there with two bolts, so this is gonna get blasted, and then we'll pull the cover off and then tape this whole, you know, the other flange. But like I said, I mean, it's literally just to protect the bearings. So our English wheel has been abused quite a bit over the uh, last few years. So what we're doing is we took the top wheel off. Um, pretty much your finish of your panel is almost, I should say almost, it's only going to be as good as the finish on your dies. So what we had happen is that on the top wheel, there was a bunch of like pitting in it. And basically it was, um, if, if you like wheel over like a rusty panel or something like that, you know, all of the, anything that's on the metal is going to then like get pressed into the wheel. Lift the thing. What happened? I pushed this down and then it bit in. Or did I push this one down? That's how I did. I pushed this one down. I was reaching for this handle and I grabbed this one and it changed the slide direction. Fuck. Well, Oliver just fucked up the top die. Uh. Yeah, but holy hell, that's one hell of a fucking chip, though. Look, do you see this thing? Look at that. Look at that. It just ate it. Yeah. For the record, I'm sorry I did that. <laughs> I, like, that was entirely on me. Shit. I, I will say this, though. They should not make these two the same shape. Well, it's... As... <laughs> on. I'm not, I'm not going to run this until you guys have safeties on. I'm walking away. So Oliver's, uh facing the top anvil 
for the lathe, or I'm sorry, for the English wheel. Basically just getting, a, getting out all of the little ripples um, from like rust that's gone through the English wheel. Just the little pits that have been in that upper die. Um, we're just smoothing them out so it'll be a nice smooth finish on the top die and then that will be polished. So when you wheel something through the wheel, it'll almost like polish the metal. Wheeling around. Open these things, see what they look like. If I put a hole in one. So Oliver has a Mini, and the uh, tires on the Mini are run flats. So snow tires in that size are like 300 and something dollars a piece. So he just opted for new wheels and tires. Boy, that's a low offset. Balance and everything. I like the orange. Yeah. What does that say? Important. Oh, these are, these these must be Italian. Cool. All that. You got TPMS sensors in them as well. Yep. Sweet. You know what that is? Lube. Lube. He's got the Blitz O threes. That's oh my god, they're so light <laughs> compared to uh, doing Mara's twenty inch. Uh, oh, the BMW wheels are heavy. You know, well. if you got them, they stretch those things to get them on there. What? They stretch those things. Oh, bro. Oh, bro. You know, they would have been even lighter if you got them in white. That's true. However, they didn't have them in white. Otherwise, I genuinely would have. Speaking of which, I still want to black out all the chrome on the Mini. Driver side. What fun? Why does that matter? That's a dumb question, but... No, you're peeling off the stickers. I need to fucking... You drive those off? Yeah. That's how you die. <laughs> what are you talking about? You ever heard... You ever seen Pee Wee's Big Adventure? Large Marge. Tell them you know, the Large reason, Marge. The reason she you. die is because because she forgot oh, to yeah. the, those take look, the stickers off. I'm happy with those. Those look good. For for what they cost, they look really good. Driver side, they're directional. I don't know. Oh, how. Oh, because of the tread. Man, that doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. Does it? Yeah. Yep. Google that one. Why does it say driver side? What if you have a right-hand drive car? Oh, or you're saying, delivering it mail. It literally says important. You better not leave, better not move that. They're cool. Engineered by OZ Oz, like Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah, but if they were if they were OZs, they'd be twice the price. Right? Economics. How does that work? I don't know. I have real rotas on my cars. Oh. <laughs> I have real rotas. So this finishes right off the lathe. And in a minute, we're gonna put it in there and then spin it with this thing. This is just like a rub piece of rubber that you put in a drill chuck to be able to like spin this. And then Jack can put the die grinder on it to like, or the, the DA on it to uh, grind the corners so it's not so sharp, right? Big wheel day. Big wheel day. Oliver got new wheels, you got a new wheel. That's it. It's yeah. more than normal. And the wheel is very hot. It is more than normal. This is how we polish the, the, the end of. That's pretty good. Other than my arm is getting super tired. And I'm getting showered in the face with sparks. Really good. What's that? What's Chris that? 400. 400? It's an 8180 to 400. Uh, there's three points before that. No. She ran away. He says goodbye. Uh, I'm out of here. Little baby. Very cool. Hey. Nice. Yeah. You gotta tear it, Joe. You gotta tear it. One, two, three. Having a bad day. You're right. You are? Why? Broke. Nothing. I got money put away that I can't touch it. Why not? You can't. 
Can't touch it. How much milk did you drink? You drank a whole thing of milk? I got another one too. Huh? I got another one too. Well, I don't want to just drop it. Here, hang on, set it down. Bill's in a bad mood. Who's in a bad mood? Bill. Bill's in a bad mood? Why is Bill in a bad mood? I don't know. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. All right, well. Perfect. Just don't let it slip over, Joe. Be careful. Not every day you get a... I meant Dominic got a bell and So what's that mean? Um, so low. <laughs> you good? Joe, where'd you get... You guys see you got a tire on there. I got a bike. Huh? I got a bike. That's a new bike? Cannondale. Oh, shit. Cannondale, huh? Joe, you drink beer? Since when do you drink beer? What? You don't drink beer, do you? No, the girl left it there. Girl left it there? Uh, You're gonna put your your clothes on top of the cake. Uh, this tire seems like it's a bit worn. Joe, where are your brake pads at? I don't know. How come every bike you have has no brake pads? What do you need? Hand? Oh, thanks. I'm gonna go to the Hellhouse and Brian. You know, no brakes at all. No. It seems like every bike Joe has, he has no brake pads. Seapost has got shock on it though. It's got double suspension. One there, right there. Look at this guy's ready for snow already. Like 75 degrees, I was gonna snow tomorrow. I'm gonna put the plow on. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you your bag, Joe. The rats, rats, that. look. The rats did it? Yep. Yeah, we got you. I got it. <sighs> this is a $60 seat. Where'd you get it? Came with the bike. Oh, came with the bike? <laughs> See you, Joe. Uh, Full rally spec with some Bridgestones, skinny. So this is what I've had sitting in the back of my car for, I don't know, round about like a year and a half now. Well, it takes a year and a half to put on some, some fog lights. He'll be jumping this thing in no time. Sweet. So I'm following Oliver home because I have his snow tires, or I'm sorry, his summer tires in the back of my truck because they don't fit in his Mini. He's spinning the tires. It's got uncontrollable power. The John Cooper Works Mini. <laughs> Literally, he just turned and the thing got into boost and roasted the tires up the hill. And then he shifted in a second and smoked through second. Mara, has, Mara had a Mini and she said she loved it. However, I think it, I wanna say maybe the engine blew up on it. So far, every stoplight and every stop sign that Oliver has pulled out of. He's roasted the tires. I think he's not gonna have any snow tires left by the time we have any snow. Watch. I bet he's not. All right guys, I'm just getting home. That does it for today. Uh, hope you liked the video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Hit the like button, hit the thumbs up or whatever, and uh, make sure you subscribe. So have a good one guys, see you tomorrow.